Nothing else for supper tonight. Nothing but this piece of black bread. Oh, how I wish your father were still alive. Now, who can that be? I'll answer it, Mother. At the door stood a tall, strange man. He wore a white turban of the purest silk. Why, hello. Aladdin, how are you, my boy? I'm all right, thank you. Who are you, please? Oh, who am I? Oh, I forget you've never seen me before. I am your uncle. My uncle? Yes, your uncle, Hamid. I'm a famous magician. Of course, the stranger wasn't really Aladdin's uncle. He was pretending. But why? Soon we'll know exactly why. Meanwhile, he performed feats of magic and showed Aladdin and his mother that he really was a magician. He made clouds appear and start raining. He clapped his hands and made thunder. Now, Aladdin, I want you to come with me on a very important journey. Where, Uncle? To the most secret part of the forest. came to an underground cave. Now, my boy, deep down inside the cave, you will find a lamp. Bring it to me. Aladdin slipped down into the cave. Deeper and deeper he went. Finally, he came upon a lamp. An old, dirty lamp that looked absolutely worthless. Could this be what he wants? Suddenly, a strange feeling came over Aladdin. He felt that he must not give up the lamp, but keep it for himself. For a long time, Aladdin remained silent, refusing to give up the lamp. I'll seal him in forever. The magician intoned some mysterious words, and a huge rock fell into the entrance of the cave, sealing it off. Then he left, never to return. Poor Aladdin. He stood inside the pitch black cavern holding the lamp and not knowing what to do. In the darkness, he stubbed his toe and fell heavily on the ground. Oh. Then to his amazement, the cave was filled with light that flowed from a huge genie that appeared out of nowhere. You call master? Who are you? The slave of the lamp. Whenever you rub the lamp, I appear to grant you your every wish. Rub the lamp? Oh, I, I must have rubbed it by accident when I fell. That is true, master. Now command, and I obey. Aladdin's first thought was for his mother. My mother has worked hard all her life, O Genie. I wish her good things to eat and fine clothes and a comfortable home. Your wish is granted, my master. Come and see. In an instant, Aladdin was home again. Mother, I'm back. My son, look, a wonderful thing has happened. And indeed, his mother was now dressed in fine clothes and lived in a fine house. Suddenly, there was a sound from the street. The sound of royal music. Aladdin sprang to the window and saw the Sultan passing by in his carriage. And with him was his beautiful young daughter. For years, Aladdin had secretly been in love with her. But how could he, unknown and the son of a widow, hope to marry the Sultan's daughter? How could he even enter the Sultan's palace without being stopped by the guards? Then Aladdin had an idea. The lamp. Here, let me rub the lamp. What do you wish, my master? Take 
with me to the palace of the Sultan. Your wish is granted, my master. Who are you? My name is Aladdin. I love you and wish to marry you. But how can that be? I am promised to another, Mephisto, son of the Grand Vizor. He rubbed the magic lamp. What do you wish, master? Form an army of invaders. Have them appear at the gates of Baghdad, but do harm no one. Your wish is granted. The Sultan's daughter saw that Mephisto was a coward, but still she thought she should marry him. Next, Aladdin had the genie change him into a helpless old beggar. Please, Mephisto, I am starving. Help me. Help you? Get out, you lazy old man. And the Sultan's daughter saw that Mephisto was cruel, but still she thought she should marry him. Finally, Aladdin ordered the genie, in disguise, to tell Mephisto that the Sultan and his daughter had quarreled, and that she had been disinherited. Worthless woman! What good is she to me without her father's money? When the Sultan's daughter heard that, her eyes were opened, and she refused to marry him. She fell in love with Aladdin and married him instead.